So, so I, I got a question this morning about, about water molecules and because it was on the exam and well you can go through the steps but then you don't quite know what you've done all the time and that practice exam had the water molecule and there were there were uh, for, for steam there were three translational modes Three rotational modes, it turns out, because a water molecule lives in a three-dimensional world and it's not linear. If it were a linear molecule, then it would only have two rotations, but, but it has three. And so you end up with, um, there, there's nine kinetic energies you have to worry about. Three of them are translation, three of them are rotation. So you end up with three vibrational kinetic energies and every time you have a vibrational kinetic energy of a vibrational potential energy they go hand in hand all the time for reasons that you've talked about uh, and so and so it looks a little funny because you say well there's three but somehow there's only two bonds so how, how do you get three vibrations so I thought I would just remind you of something that you know not only can these bonds change their length but this angle right here is fixed. There's an equilibrium angle. So one of the things that an oxi one of the kinds of vibration an oxygen molecule does is that. Its, vibra its angles can change even though the bonds aren't stretching or compressing. So the angle change is another, uh, another kind of oscillation. And so you, you can't just by looking at the molecule, unless you've done this a lot and you're kind of a whiz at uh, three-dimensional motion, it's, it's really hard to figure out what all the various oscillations of something are. But you can always count them. I can always count up what's going on with this molecule and decide that in the end, because there's three ways the whole molecule can move through space, because there's three ways it can rotate like that or like that or like this. There's three ways it can rotate, three ways it can fly through space. That means there has to be for this triatomic molecule three kinetic energies that are vibration. So I know that there's three kinds of, three special kinds of vibration here. Maybe I can't always figure what they are. With, with a, a little practice you could also figure out what they are. And it just gets more complicated. Uh, CH4, five, five atoms in CH4, five atoms but still only three of them are translations through space, three of them are rotations and that means the other nine I guess if there's five atoms, five times three dimensions is fifteen if I subtract the six for translations and rotations then I end up with nine more, nine kinds of vibration nine vibrational modes for CH4 it, it's a complicated thing it's actually also <laughs> turns out extremely important in, in the world uh, that we live in today because these vibrational modes that involve springs that don't stretch but just changing angles, those vibrational modes uh, it turns out are the important ones because it's really easy to bend something. It's hard to stretch and compress the springs but it's really easy to change the angle and because it's easy to change angles, anything where you can change the angles is a good greenhouse gas. And so water is a good greenhouse gas. Uh, CO2 has angles that you can change. It's a good greenhouse gas. Uh, N2, not a greenhouse gas. O2, not a greenhouse gas. Anything that has angles that you can change turns out is for reasons that uh, you might be able to figure out uh, after you finish 7C. Yeah? Why is the vibrational energy for both kinetic and potential Because if there's a kinetic energy that's going up and down because there's a vibration, then there's some interaction that's causing it to go up and down. There is a potential energy associated with that kinetic energy. There, there has to be or the kinetic energy wouldn't be going up and down. So because vibration means 
Vibration means kinetic energy is small, big as it comes through equilibrium, small again. The kinetic energy itself is going up and down and up and down. Some other energy must be going up and down. As the kinetic energy goes up, some other energy has to be going down. And we know what it is because you can always say, well, if there's a vibration, it's because there's some interaction. There's some something that you can pretend is like springs that's holding the atom in an equilibrium place and then it can oscillate around there. Yeah? Uh, also, aren't vibrational energies inactive at lower temperatures? For, for reasons that, uh, uh, for reasons of quantum mechanics, vibrational energy levels tend to be much farther apart than uh, rotational energy levels. And rotational energy levels are much farther apart than translational energy levels. So because the energy levels are so far, and, and what I said last time about atoms don't rotate because that would involve changing an electron from one level to another, atoms, those energies are even farther apart. So the rotation of a single atom, I would say, is already frozen out because of quantum mechanics, is frozen out at room temperature and even well above room temperature. Any reasonable temperature we live at does not have rotations of single atoms. But vibrations, some of the vibra vibrational energy levels are, are pretty far apart, but not as far apart as atomic energy levels in atoms. And so at low temperatures, those get frozen out. And at high temperatures, they are available. So, and, and well, I mean, it depends on, <coughs> how do I want to say this? Let's just say it depends on how strong the spring is, and it depends on the masses of the things that are oscillating, and I'll just leave it at that and leave it for 7C to straighten that out for you. But it's because the vibrational energy levels have, are fairly far apart that at low temperatures there just isn't enough energy to bump those up into higher energy levels. So in that sense, they don't vibrate at low temperatures. Not very much. But the other energy levels, rotational and translational, are all much closer together. And so you see those at low temperatures. At low enough temperatures, eventually the rotational energy levels will freeze out also. But those are energy levels, I mean those are temperatures, again, that we don't live at, really cold temperatures. <coughs>